GCSE results, we will know that they are out tomorrow. Of course, many GCSE students go on to study A-levels, but what happens if you're not interested in further education? How about an apprenticeship? Mike Liggins has been to a company which relies on real apprentices. This is Landamores at Hoveton in Norfolk. They make luxury sailing yachts worth millions. Just the sort of thing Sir Alan would love. But here, the apprentices do proper work. Meet 16-year-old Lee Morby, who joined the firm just three weeks ago. He took GCSEs this year, but was never a big fan of studying. No, it was all right. I survived it. But I've always wanted to do boat building, so I just focused on that. Woodwork, engineering, electrics. I love, I love all that, so it's perfect, really. Over the years, we identified a need where we had an ageing workforce, and... Uh, the industry in general wasn't recruiting, so we, so many years ago, we set about recruiting the youngsters to, to fill the vacancies as the older generation moved on. The youngsters came through. All the apprentices are looked after by an experienced hand for the first year. Lee will also do one day a week at Great Yarmouth College. Across the region, two and a half thousand apprenticeships were offered to 15 and 16 year olds last year. Hairdressing led the way, followed by construction, engineering, and the equine industry. 18-year-old Danny Danes has been at Landamores for two years now. Her mum was a chippy here too, and Danny loves it. Fun, yeah, it's good working with all the guys, yeah. <laughs> and can you do most things now? Yeah, yeah. They tell me what to do and I'll do it. <laughs> Apprentices like Lee Morby can take home around 150 pounds a week. So if your results aren't quite as good as you were hoping for tomorrow, don't despair, there is another way. Join the real apprentices. Mike Liggins, BBC Look East, Norfolk. Looks like a very nice boat. Beautiful boat, <laughs> isn't it? Now, after two rounds of this season's Carling Cup, the region has just one representative left, Peterborough United. They beat Ipswich Town 2-1 last night, but there was disappointment for Southend United. The Carling Cup has been the only competition that both Peterborough and Ipswich had managed to win in this season, so one was bound to be feeling a little more heat come the end of last night's tie. Cheering on in the blue corner for Peterborough, Sir Alex Ferguson, in town to see how son Darren would measure up against his former Old Trafford teammate Keane. And it was Ipswich who came out of the blocks quicker. Tamis Priskin easing the tension on the town bench to put Ipswich ahead with a close-range shot. Then came the tie's turning point. A clear penalty, but this time Priskin was outdone by goalkeeper Joe Lewis. That, according to Keane, summed up his side season so far. Credit, though, to Peterborough and Lee Frecklington for capitalising. The match was settled in the second half when the ever-impressive George Boyd popped up to score from the edge of the area. Peterborough relieved, Ipswich searching for reinforcements. Well, nobody likes losing football matches, and we're all very proud, let me tell you. Um, but you have to deal with these setbacks, and uh, it's another one tonight. But, you know, what do we do? We just, you know, feel sorry for ourselves. No, we're in in the morning, we get ready for an important game on Saturday. No, no signings on the way as we speak, but listen, I still have faith in the group of players we have that we'll be all right. I'm just glad we've got in the third round. You know, especially I think other teams would have gone under tonight. You know, we've, we've not been in... Well, we've been in decent form. We've not had the right results. We've started the season poorly. All the doubters were out there. Mm. Uh, but I know what I've got in the dressing room. And one result doesn't, doesn't make the season, obviously. But we're obviously pleased to get the win. Southend United also came unstuck last night in a difficult tie at Hull City. The Premier League side were ahead after just seven minutes. That one straight out of David Beckham's book. And the golfing class showed a game when Hull scored another before half-time. Mind you, not to be outdone, Frank Moussa's effort kept the tie alive right up until Giovanni sealed it from just outside the area. Pam Melbourne, BBC Look East. And you can see all the second round action tonight on BBC One in the Carling Cup show at quarter past 11. Highlights will be online from tomorrow. The draw for round three takes place on Saturday. Peter Brew will be very interested. Now this week on Look East, what life is like for service personnel and their families away from the war zones. For many, being in the forces is like being in a family, 
and leaving can be tough. Karen Campbell from St Neots has written a book about her life married to the military. Her husband used to be a soldier and she says adjusting to life on Civvy Street has been hard. For 22 years, Karen Campbell was married to the army. With her husband Chris, a clerical officer, they were stationed all over Europe. Even Daniel, their son, now in his teens, was born in a military hospital. But she says adjusting to life outside the forces is hard. It takes a bit longer in civilian life to make friends. Everyone has their home and their family, their own commitments. Um, and if you're new to an area, they don't um, exclude you, but they don't automatically make introductions as quickly as in military circles. Karen's written a book about her travels as an army wife, with recipes found along the way. This one from their time in Berlin. She says over the years, the army's changed a great deal. When I met Chris, the IRA was still bombing things. Soldiers weren't allowed to leave the house unless they um, covered up. Uh, they weren't allowed to leave in military uniform for their, for their safety more than anything else. Um, whereas now, you know, we've got forces all over the place and uh, they're, they're doing much more positive PR, the army now. Whereas in those days, it was almost something to be ashamed of if you were in the military. Karen considers herself lucky Chris didn't fight in the Falklands or the Gulf, but her brother-in-law, Michael, is now serving in Afghanistan. In the past, um, you actually knew who you were fighting against, and they almost stood up and said, hello, over here, this is me, whereas now um, it's, it's more sort of... Um, the warfare is, is more guerrilla warfare, if you like. Um, you don't actually see the person um, who, who is uh, fighting against you. Karen says the army years were happy ones. Now she's adjusting to life outside the military. Mike Cartwright, BBC Look East, Sydney is. Now, do you have a story about life in the military? If so, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, you can email or you can phone. The details are, of course, on the screen. I think we've got another open garden. We have. <laughs> That's a surprise. <laughs> and tonight we're off to Henstead in Suffolk, the unlikely setting for a subtropical garden. I don't think I'd be interested in gardening so much if it was about sort of hanging baskets and stuff like that. I guess it's a fantasy garden and, and, and that's really what the exotic garden is. It's a reminder of sort of foreign holidays or some sort of fantasy world. I think it might go back to reading The Hobbit as a kid. Going through this sort of fantasy world, coming across different things. It's that sort of drama, you know, of the plants and the otherworldliness of them. The main plants in the garden are the Trachycarpus palm and we've got lots of tree ferns and bamboos. We've got these three bananas at the moment in fruit, which are great big pods, and they just look like they're out of space, really, you know. And the little tiny bunches of bananas at the back. It's a hardy exotic garden. 98% of the plants stay in the ground all year round without fleece or um, without being covered. You've got to kind of share it with, with people. We don't have a village hall such as this becomes a focal point for the community on an open day. We're trying to sort of lift things up to a little bit of drama, people's lives, hopefully. I love that Andrew reappearing and disappearing just like the Hobbit. Fantastic. And a beautiful garden. And if you want to visit, it's open this Sunday between 11 in the morning and 4 in the afternoon. It'll cost you £3 to get in. And it's on Church Road in Henstead in Suffolk. And of course, details on the website bbc.co.uk forward slash look east and click on Suffolk. Now, the weather for Sunday is looking pretty good for that open garden and for much of the bank holiday. More about that in a moment. Today, well, we've had a bit of everything, really. Quite a lot of cloud, a bit of sunshine, especially in the east, and a little bit of patchy rain, too. Now, at the moment, uh, still some patchy rain coming out of that thicker cloud, and I think that will continue through tonight. And for much of the night, we will have a good covering of cloud, but we will have some clear intervals, too. And temperatures, well, a little bit warmer than last night for many of us, around 13 or 14 degrees Celsius, and it probably will feel a bit more humid, too. And we've had very blustery winds today. They've been gusting between 30 and 40 miles per hour at times in some parts of the region. But after midnight, those winds should start to ease down to a light to moderate south. Westerly. So tomorrow, this is the little front that bought.